Hey everybody, Brian with you from the Game Continent. We are continuing with our Spring 2020 Championship Series. We are on to the reverse knockout round. We're in the first group stage. I don't know, just pick something and go. So yeah, anyways, reverse knockout round, so on and so forth. So we are looking for the bottom two sieves. Bottom two sieves at 225 will be officially eliminated from the game. Now keep in mind, uh, we got a long way to go, so just because Pedro's down there and Yaverman's down there probably doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. Although, most likely, uh, Khmer is going to be one of the two eliminated. He might get his two cities back, but we'll see. Um, anyways, let's pop this back up to full speed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know. I mean, I don't mind it when you start games and it, it has it go slow, but I don't know. It's kind of annoying that like every time I load into the game, I have to redo it, but whatever. Whatever. Uh, I guess it's probably part of the mod. They probably just made it so it immediately goes to slow. Which, don't get me wrong, it's kind of entertaining, but just like a tad bit too slow. Like, if I could get like a medium speed between the two, that would be really nice, you know? I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe it would only go uh, slow. Like, maybe units would only go slow if they're at war with each other. I don't know. That would be another potential. So, Greece is kind of digging their way back, even though they have been completely crapped on many, many times. Uh, Argos is going to flip in nine turns. When is the next era? Yeah, not looking too good for Teddy, man. Let's see, he's in a dark age, Greece was in a normal age, so yeah, that's not looking too good for Teddy. Um, cause it's negative, ah, it's negative five, he's getting closer. Let's see, Chicago, Baltimore's gonna grow, but that's still gonna keep it, I think, at like negative four. What's the citizens, negative 7.6. Yeah, what is his other benefits? Amenities are equal right now, so if he got a few more amenities, he might be able to switch it. Oh, uh, wait, I'm looking at Chicago. <laughs> uh, he does have the governor there, and then he has other effects. If he puts a unit in there, and if he has the right um, government, plus if he gets the... Uh uh, 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 the plus two for having a governor in there, he could potentially hold on to it once Baltimore grows. Now, are the, is the AI smart enough to do that? No. <laughs> Not at all. So France is still trying to uh, conquer Brazil from, you know, basically halfway across the continent. Have fun with that. Is that actually halfway across the continent? This is all... Yeah, yeah, it is. Boom. Beautiful. So, Gnosis ended up flipping, and Rhodes, uh, well, that one had flipped a while ago. Uh, uh, Phoenicia is trying to take it back, and Rhodes is really low on HP as well, but I don't think she's going to be able to take slash hold either of those. Uh, Lingapura ended up going back to Khmer, who is still at war with Australia. No, he's not. He, uh, he's actually at war with Samaria. Australia is. And Khmer's at war with still Samaria. Okay, so then you're moving through the territory because you're at war with Samaria, I guess? Sure, sure. This is kind of a bit of a big war. Now, both of these guys are most likely going to make it through. I don't really see anything being able to happen here that would eliminate either of them. Now, if all of a sudden Samaria started conquering a bunch of Australia, perhaps. But I, 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 it would be surprising, I think, if Australia ended up losing it. Now, the question is, did Australia get... Surprise ward. And I'm kind of thinking yes. Because these knights and uh, the cursor, cursor are popping out pretty quickly. So I kind of think they maybe were. The other option, I don't think there was an emergency. There was. That's what happened. Okay, that's why they have open borders. So it was a military emergency and uh, Australia joined in on it. Hmm. And that's why he's trying to take it back. He's got four turns left on that knight. He's not going to get that knight in time. Man, he needs that knight. He needs that knight right now. If he gets that knight, this changes the game. Because all of a sudden, that garrison defense strength goes to 58, I think it would be. Because it would be 48, plus he would have the unit in there. Now nah, he lost it, man. So close. Well, all right. That then was the emergency succeeding. I would think so. Yeah, that should have been the emergency succeeding. Now, that doesn't really hinder Samaria all that much, because keep in mind, Samaria still has ridiculous amounts of room, and we're not going for first through third. You just got to stay better than the bottom. Uh, and uh, Yaverman's still way behind, mostly because he's not been building out settlers. So he's just fallen way far behind. Now, there's a huge desert here. Uh, like, this is one of the biggest deserts I think I've ever seen in Civ <laughs> 6. So we're going to see what kind of happens here. Like, do we think England's going to kind of bypass a lot of the desert? You know, maybe stick to the coast? But I imagine England's going to be the one trying to settle it. She also looks like maybe she's going this way, which maybe isn't as smart of an idea. Uh, Japan's doing okay up here. Yeah, Japan's fine. 
Uh, Dido seems to be succeeding despite the fact pretty much getting her butt kicked. She did take Gnosis back, but she's not going to be able to hold on to it. Now, Russia did put a town over here on the coast, which Dido's like, ding, ding. No, it was more like, did Yeah, I need the Jaws theme song there. I screwed that one up completely, but who cares? All right, uh, Teddy is looking still pretty good. He did lose Argos. He's actually only at five cities right now, but he's going to get number six down here in a minute. Yeah, he wasn't able to hold on to Argos, which I'm not surprised by that. Uh, Thera. Now, the biggest thing... I was just... Thera, that uh, uh, volcano. I don't know where that one is, Thera. I've never heard of it. But the thing is, like, if Teddy can get a Golden Age here, we're going to see uh, some stuff flipping, I think. Ottomans have pulled it back. Remember, they were in bottom there for the longest time. They are now in the safe zone. Right now, it's still Brazil and Yavarman, but Dido's not too far uh, ahead. Same thing with Soleiman. Then there's a little bit of a gap before you get to Japan, and then a little bit more of a gap before you get to Gilgamesh and basically everyone else. Yeah, pretty much everyone else is fine. Pericles now, looking like he was going to get completely crapped on, because he ended up losing how many cities? I think he lost Pergamon at one point too, didn't he? He lost Argos, he lost Gnosis, and he lost Rhodes. And yet, despite that, he's currently in first place. <laughs> oh, greasy, greasy, grease. Does he have ridiculous culture? Yeah, kind of. Does he have a lot of wonders slash great people? Oh, Peter passed him. Peter's gonna win just because he's got ridiculous great people, 35. Yeah, of course, of course. Religion, okay, he's a little bit higher. Wonders, yeah, Peter doesn't have the wonders though. But he has the great people. Because he gets great people from his holy sites. So he doesn't have um, as many wonders because he's not making nearly as much culture. Now, Valletta, I would assume is suzerained by Peter. Yeah, so that's why that one's not getting conquered. We will see about Jerusalem. Let's see. No suzerain there, so I wonder if Russia will take it. Jean Kutten actually got a military emergency. Against Khmer? That's an older one, right? Yeah, that was an older one, because this was all Khmer had. Khmer just had the four cities. All right, so... That's interesting. Australia joined helping Khmer on a military emergency, and then Khmer is like, you know what? Military emergency against you. Oh, it failed. It failed. Who voted for it? Yavarman and Gilgamesh. John Curtin voted no, though. That's actually hilarious. Uh, but then there is... Potentially a city-state emergency against Japan. But no one's really close to Japan. I mean, Dido. Dido, like, what is with her army? My God. She's kind of scary. Dido the aggressor? I don't know I've seen Dido be this aggressive before. Gnosis ended up flipping yet again. <laughs> Greece with that clutch normal age, man. Who would have known? Who would have known? England, where are you settling? You've been kind of halvering with that settler for quite a while. She's just like... I mean, she's had some really pretty desert, like, tiles here. Like, a lot of desert in her territory. The sad thing, she's building Petra there. Like, imagine a Petra in here with the niter and the aluminum and all those sexy, sexy hills. Like, even Birmingham, man, would be a much better choice for that. But, all right. So, we're about to get the next era. This one's going to be big. This one might be big. I mean, there's only a little over 100 turns left. So, this one will really set the tone for the rest of it, I think. So Australia and Samaria seem to be at peace. No, they're still at war, but nothing really is happening. Uh, it's probably in their best interest not to just screw with each other at this point and just kind of like make it, <laughs> you know. Doesn't mean the AI is going to do that because the AI doesn't know our rules. And even if the AI knew our rules, I doubt they would actually work towards it. Uh, okay, that's a very interesting place for New York. I mean, that's basically saying, come conquer me. Now, it looks like Ottomans are going for Washington, which, you know, capital thing. So, uh, actually, no. Are you at war against Greece? Mm, we weren't done. No, you're at war with Teddy. So, do you have an alliance? He gave open borders to uh, Ottomans, which is funny because they were at war with each other for the longest time. Now, if Teddy gets a Dark Age here again... And Ottomans get a Golden Age? That could be kind of bad. Brazil still only has five cities. They just haven't been settling. I'm not quite sure what's up with them right now. But things aren't looking good for them. They're going for Nazca, it looks like. 
That's not bad. If he could conquer Nazca, you know, hey, at least it's a city. But yeah, he doesn't really have any settlers or anything popping out. Ottomans are trying to settle over here. That actually might turn into a free Brazil city, so that might be, um, that might be fine. That might help them out. But he's starting to run out of time, and he really needs to start popping out some more cities. Uh, Greece has another settler. Not sure where you're going to put that, unless you can throw that up here. But that's probably going to end up flipping. Pretty much anywhere Greece goes at this point, it's going to flip. Yeah, I, I can't imagine, unless he goes on this island. That's about the only safe place for him. By the way, that's kind of a cool, interesting island. It would actually be cool if this was your map to spawn on this island. That would be an interesting little challenge. Spawn on that island and then carve your way into victory. Okay, we got two turns left. Uh, England, you still have not crossed the Great Desert. Has it, like Who has England actually met? Okay, she's met most everyone. Uh, probably via ship. It would also be rather interesting if you could mod the game and have like no ships or no sea units. So basically no one could cross the water. That would really change the game. Like, I think little rule sets like that would be a nice little addition. Like, hey, no one can, and I know obviously that screws certain civs, but you know, maybe it would just disable those civs that rely on the sea. But it would be rather interesting if all of a sudden you had to like cross via land and you had just like one little tile here, although you don't actually, could, but whatever. Uh, you know what I'm saying. So golden age for Yaverman in Australia, interesting. Uh, Samaria got a dark age. Langash, yeah, is flipping. Is that gonna screw him over? Where's he at right now? He should be okay, but that's not great. That's not great. None of these are flipping. Okay, who else got a golden age? No one. Teddy got a normal age. Greece got a normal age, so nothing up here is gonna flip. Russia also got a normal age. So yeah, nothing's flipping up here. Dido got a normal age. Who got the dark age? Japan did. Japan's holding on to Bandar. That would be the only potential one flipping over there. And then Ottomans. Anything for Ottomans flipping. Bursa still full loyalty. Let's see. Yeah, Chicago's a little low. If Teddy had Argos, I think Bursa might flip. I wonder, it's probably pretty close here, the, the pop. 2.4, yeah, it's pretty close. Ankara is basically clutching it right now with the 13 size. Um, and Teddy's just a little bit behind in Washington, Philly. Probably the desert. Honestly, if he didn't have that desert there, and Boston's also equally low because of it. But if it wasn't for that des desert there, there's no way Bursa would be able to have full loyalty. Now, if New York grows, which is unlikely because there's no fresh water. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say, if New York got a little bigger, maybe. Okay, where did the Ottoman settler go? Hello, Ottoman settler. Where, where did you go, my friend? Did you go back home? That surely is not that one, right? Did you get conquered? You going somewhere completely off the wall? Are you going into the water and going for this island? Still so much space. We should have done a smaller map. Yeah, I might try a large map for the next group stage. Instead of the gigantic map or whatever I'm doing now. What is, what's this map size? Steen, deity, whatever, the one below. Just because there's still a lot of room, and keep in mind, we're only going to 225 turns. So, the only issue would be is if everyone spawns, like, right on top of each other. Um, I mean, we have some tight, like, areas. Like, Greece was pretty closed off, but still. Oh, you went right there with Konya. All right, well, that's going to flip, and unfortunately for you, that's not going to flip to Brazil. Unfortunately for Brazil, at least. So, Yaverman's still at the bottom. Yeah, and by a large distance. And Brazil's still pretty far behind. But honestly, with Konya going, there's a chance, especially if Brazil could grab Konya. Is France still trying to invade Brazil? Nope, you're invading Ottomans now. Okay. <laughs> Did France ever invade Brazil? Like, I'm trying to think. That would be Portugal. Would France in the New World colonies ever fought against Brazil? No one else in South America is French, right? Like, France got New Orleans and just like a little bit of America, and then they got some of Canada, but were they in South America? Man, it's been a while. You guys need to let me know. Did France and Brazil ever end up at war? I mean, it's unlikely because Brazil probably didn't become a state until, you know, well after colonization, but Portuguese Brazil. Did it ever end up at war with France? 
Did France and per Portugal ever end up at war? And I'd have to say probably not, because they didn't border each other. Also, oh my god, there's a lot of little islands here. Yeah, this map's too big, man. Especially when you, like, look at the sea level. Like, there's so much sea. Yeah, we could definitely do a smaller map next time, I think. Just change and trains of thoughts. Just whoosh, whoosh, one to the other to the other. Anywho, so then Gash did end up flipping. Isin is still going to be fine. And uh, Samaria got a couple extra cities up. So Samaria should be completely okay. What's uh, yield science right now? Jean Curtin is at 122. Gilgamesh is at, well, they were higher, but now they dropped to 116. So they must have just switched something. Uh, Victoria's way behind. Like, Victoria's yields are just terrible across the board. Wow. Um, still way better. Still doubling the Yaverman one. Yeah, Yaverman just got so crapped on. Same thing with Japan. Japan's also really bad, too. There is a chance that Japan could get knocked out here, which would be absolutely mind-blowing. Yeah, he's down to four cities. Five. That one's still being invaded. He ended up losing one to Barbarians, it looks like. Did he? He's got a decent okay army still. He's still okay when it comes to score level, but... I mean, Dido, if she's able to, you know, declare a war and get some stuff, maybe. All right, military emergency pass against Teddy. What did Teddy grab? Uh, Guajarlos, which I'm assuming was Brazil. So now he's at war with France, France and Greece. Uh, Greece is going to be bringing some troops down, but there's not a huge pass here, so it's going to be a little hard. But he does have the bombard. Um, but Philly does have the walls. Let's see. They are ancient, though. Yeah, he'll probably be okay. I don't see... Greece doesn't have a gigantic army. Also, Greece is still at war with Dido, it looks like. Yeah, so most likely Greece isn't going to be able to do a whole lot. France does have a decent-sized army, but the long uh, trek makes it kind of hard there. Guajarlos will flip, though. I don't think there's any way for Teddy to hold it. Actually, if he puts a... Um, okay, all he needs is a governor there. Hmm. Did not expect that. And then this is new, so plus five for range, and city centers get extra production. So, hey, Teddy, put someone there, man. Oh, uh, because Brazil had a Dark Age? No, Brazil had Normal Age. Hmm, interesting. Teddy's got enough. He really could grab Babylon. That would be helpful for him. Is anyone suzerain? You know, maybe that's what happened. Maybe Teddy was suzerain, or sorry, not Teddy. Uh, Gilgamesh was suzerain Babylon? Actually, that doesn't make sense. Babylon's way over here. Most likely that wouldn't have happened. So crossbows again, ancient walls. Brazil does also have crossbows, so these crossbows are going to get their butt kicked. Yeah, there you go. I think what I think if I remember right, crossbows get two hit by crossbows. So, which honestly is kind of disappointing. You know, it makes it makes range kind of hard to use early game if the AI has range, or even if they have walls. Um, yeah, I don't see granola again, man. What the hell? I mean, I eat granola for breakfast every day, so that's why sometimes it gets stuck in my mouth. But um, I don't really see uh, U.S. being able to grab anything else. They're full loyalty now without a governor, so they should be able to hold on to it. And I don't imagine that they're going to have problems um, uh, uh, holding it from the emergency, too. So we'll see. Brazil is trying to invade. They still have their settlers. Sorry, not Brazil. Uh, Egypt. Then, are we looking at potential war here with you and Dido? They could be friendly. Actually, I don't know. I see samurai in your territory. No, they are at war. Okay. I think Japan might have declared the war, too. Let's see. Japan is at 561. Dido's at 489. It seems more likely Japan declared the war. I don't think there was an emergency against her or anything like that. So, no. So, Japan is feeling... I mean, the thing is, Japan is getting the plus five on the coast. And, like, uh, Biblios has no walls. Carthage is at medieval wall, so that's going to be a hard take. Yeah, that's going to be a really hard take. What is her... Now nah, she's got crossbows too, so okay. The walls are doing a lot of damage then. Carthage is in the capital, though. Where's the capital? Tyre. Yeah, you're not going to really be able to get to Tyre. But if Greece is distracting enough of his, uh, her army, he has a chance. The fact that he has samurai right now really is a game changer. Samurai plus being on the coast... Samurai, because Samurai are 50? They're 48. So they're significantly stronger than anything else at this point in the game. Because they come out in military tactics. Ugh. And they're a little late. They're not too much ahead. Like, you get them pretty much. You could get them about the same time as musket men. So there's a chance that Dido has musket men, but I'm not seeing any musket men. 
Also, I'm not necessarily seeing Niter either. We could look here. Is Dado making Niter? She's not making Niter. Hojo is making Niter, so he actually could potentially switch these to Musketmen before too long. Um, but then he's also getting the plus five. Japan is really powerful. They're one of the best civs in the game. Uh, let's see. Adjacency bonus. No, 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 no. Plus five combat strength adjacent to the coast. So as long as he's hanging out near the capital, he's going to have ridiculous amounts of damage. He's also rolling around with the warrior monks, which aren't going to be nearly as helpful. The pikemen are okay, because pikemen are 48 as well, right? Now, obviously, they're going to take an extra 15 damage to... Or 41. Oh, okay. They are going to take the extra damage from the samurai, but... At least it's gonna help keep their city at high garrison defense strength. What do you have in there? You have a crossbow. If you put the pikeman in there, nah, yeah, it should still be higher technically. It should be with the pikeman. Because the pikeman has more strength than a melee strength than the crossbow. But the crossbow at least is doing more range damage, where the pikeman you just kinda have to keep it there. Uh Japan's starting to run out of units, so it doesn't look like that's gonna be able to happen. You guys are still at war? Are you at war? Are you guys doing anything? No, you guys are just ch uh, chilling right now. What are you doing? You're at war with Samaria. Issen is now flipping. 11 turns. Still got a bit. So, probably not going to see anything happen there. But we need to wrap this episode up, so. Um, yeah, we've got about 80 turns left. So, yeah, I think we're just going to wrap this up here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like, comment. Let me know what you think. As always, hit the subscribe button. Join the game. Comment. Show your support. Japan's bringing it right back. All right, I'll see you next episode. I'm going to leave the, you on this cliffhanger.